Hello and welcome back to Bricking It. And today we're going to be re rebuilding the Gryffindor common room. So this is still a work in progress, but I really, really want to try something new. So let's get started. So the first thing you're going to notice is that we've got our standard 16 by 8 module on here. And we've got our portrait hole again on the end, but we've changed sides of the castle. Sneaky peek. And that is uh, just because in the movie geography of the castle, Gryffindor Tower was much nearer to the clock tower, kind of in that range over kind of behind near the hospital wing, that kind of area. So I've swapped Ravenclaw and Gryffindor at the top of the castle. Ravenclaw's a lot closer to the astronomy tower. It's in fact now underneath it. And Gryffindor is hosting the clock tower. And that kind of worked out nicely because I did need an extension part for what I've got planned. Uh, and it just means I can continue that extension down through a couple of other modules, which I will show you at another time. But let's get on with our build. You may notice here something unusual about our wall. Let's investigate. So here is our Griffin Room common room stripped down to a much earlier stage of the build process because I just wanted to show you some of the things I'm doing with the Gryffindor common room. Here we have on the side, instead of building the walls out of bricks, We've got a large panel. It does not want to come off. Come on. Which is just held on at each end by a couple of brackets. So we've got a couple of brackets, and that gives us a half plate depth so that two plates will nicely create a wall that runs flush with the other bricks on there. So that's the way of creating the wall. But why go to the trouble of creating this weird panelled wall. Just put it back in place because when it's in place, it kind of shows you what I need. And looking down here, between these bricks and the plate, we get that slight gap because what I'm intending to do, I'm going to do it now, I've not tested this, is I'm going to cut the lenticular background that came in the Gryffindor House banner set and install it in here. So I can use that lenticular fireplace with Sirius's face appearing in the flames in this mock. I'm also going to use another part with this end doorway here. Again, we've got this extra piece just behind the doorway which is just made up of a piece on a bracket giving us that half plate of space and then just some bricks just to push against that space just to hold the lenticular design for the staircase which I'm also going to cut out and install into this space so that will sit on its bottom between the studs and the lintel of the door be held in place hopefully by this and these and the space for it to occupy will be provided by the little air gap that the bracket always leaves us and that will sit just there now other lenticular pieces that i've seen on other products that use this style tend to be a fairly thick piece of a uh, card with um, the plastic lenticular arrangement on it that doesn't seem to be the case with the Gryffindor banners so let's have that's all my scrabbling around come back and you can see if it will focus that these pieces are very thin they are really really skinny in fact skinnier than that space so there's a chance these are going to rattle around and just be awful but what i would like is to have visible through that doorway the stairs 
over there and also Sirius's head in the fireplace over here. So I've got to cut the uh, backdrop and I've got to make sure that it's wide enough that it fits behind the bricks and you don't see the cut edges all around. And of course the top of the fireplace just there. So we've got to be high enough to go all the way up to here or in fact, just up here, because that's where our air gap ends. So it's going to be quite a tight fit as it slides along the top. And I may need a slight redesign by removing this um, tile here and integrate that um, plate, sorry, into this brick layer just to raise it up. Oh, no, but then that's supporting that. Ooh, it's going to be tense when we see how close this cut has to come. I'm gonna go and get my scissors and I don't think I'm gonna be doing this on screen, although I will start each cut and show you the measuring process. It's a bit nerve wracking. Here we go. Right, been off to the kitchen. Got my trusty scissors. Been knocking around the house since about 1986. And a piece with all the spacings that I will need to use as a template. So, this is the size of bracket, although we're only using a thin one on the main piece. This is the right size, and I just wanted a slightly longer straight edge to get that size. And it sits on top of a plate, just so we've got a bit of clearance at the top of the archway. Again, not a lot. The tolerances are quite slight. And when we bring in a lenticular piece, I think I want to square up that bottom step. Just there, so that's going to be my look. Now it offsets the arch. Don't want to square up the arch at the top. Let's have a look. That arch sits at the top. Uh, is that better? Is that better? That looks awful at the top, doesn't it? I think I want the keystone to be central at the top. It's not too bad. Stairs still do their weird. So it works going that way. But going that way, it just jumps. That's a shame. So I'm going to be viewing it. This is going to be my main viewing direction. Does it sort of work? No, not really. Anyway, I did want the stairs. I'm committed. I'm going for it. I'm doing it. So let's lay this down. In the interest of science. Let's put some straight lines on this bad boy so we know where we're going to cut. All right, ready for my first piece of surgery. So on the back of the piece, just scored some lines with a craft knife here and here. And that defines the limits of the piece. So it's no wider than the archway. So it's got to fit here between the two archway pieces. And then the height of it just goes only up as high as my brick and bracket so that it will fit in just underneath the bracket at the top. So the moment the truth has come, prepare to witness a heresy, ladies and gentlemen. The cut into Lego with scissors. He's doing it. You're actually destroying a brand new piece from a set you spent £30 on. What a lunatic. Having said that, I spent £30 and I want to get some use out of it. I do not have the display pace or display space even to show those banners off. And even if I did, I'm not sure that's how I'd want to display them as banners. A bit more. Not a piece of paper, you can't just tear the corner off. And chonk, and chonk. Are you ready? Oh. This is thrilling stuff, I'm sure I'll agree. <sighs> and we have a lenticular stairway. Groovy, groovy. Did I mess it up? Ha ha ha! Mais non. I did not. Oh, and it actually got a nice friction fit in there. But let's put our thingy in. Now this cunningly named thingy is really to stop me pushing it out by accident. It's not super gonna hold it in place. 
but if I or one of the kids just accidentally put a finger through that hole, it's not going to push that in. I mean, I have to deconstruct the whole thing to put. I like it. I like it. I'm glad I did it. It's groovy. Oh, right. Fire time. This one is going to be a little trickier. So I had dreams of showing you my marking out process, but I just couldn't get the pieces close enough to my body to show you where it needs to be marked. So here we are. We are marked out six studs wide and 11 plates high. And that's the space we need to fill in the uh, fireplace behind. I don't know if you can see through this, you can't. So we just literally come up right to the very top of the uh, mantelpiece, or the very bottom rather than the mantelpiece. And it actually fits perfectly six studs across there. So I wonder if we could... Right, it's only plastic card after all. Could we bend and score? Ooh. Let's have a look. So we can score it and bend it. I'm gonna put a hole in my table. Ah, oh, gone offline. Never try and cut farther away from your body than you should do. Now I'm going to do that one scissors because if I now bend it, it's all going to go along the wrong lines. So I'm just going to straight line back. Ah, fudge knuckles. Never try and be clever. I do not have the intelligence for it. Let's cut here. Get through our fireplace. So my worst fear came true with this. I made a complete pig's ear of it. Look at the top of that. Oh, good Lord. An 11 year old with basic skills could have done that better. But hopefully it's going to be hidden. And all my dirty mistakes will disappear behind the, oh look at that shadow matching that arch beautifully anyway let's see if we can install our fire so let's fit our fireplace and see if our heresy was worth it here you go serious what's a little tight may have cut it a smidge wide but it's in we have serious in our fireplace now I'm going to go purists the world over, crying out. Hmm. Maybe my measurement was off and I'll get a second crack at No, no. Sadly, it was good. Ooh, but we do have a bit of overflow there. Not to worry. Yeah, I might have to cut that just a smidge shorter because those bricks aren't quite connecting and we're just getting a bit of overspill there and at the top that will be covered with other bricks that not so much right take two let's trim this bad boy down a bit so a quick trim later we have much cleaner edges i need to go back and have a little wreath shuffle but there's our fireplace with our serious face. Why are you so serious? Good. Excellent. Love that. Right, it's time to finish off the uh, Gryffindor build. So one thing to just think about or talk about really before we go on. This is actually a mirror of the layout of the true Gryffindor common room from the movies. Um... When I was on the other side of my castle, this was a perfect um, one. It went from the uh, portrait hole round to the fireplace and then the big window with the slope, uh, sloping entry. Um, what's this thing called? Windowsill or wall even. And then round to the stairs up to the dormitories. And that was great on that side. Uh, but since I decided to move to the other side, because I need the portrait hole at this end, I've actually got a mirror version of the Gryffindor common room. So we'll just call this the book version because no one has ever seen that. Right, let's uh, finish our build then. So I'm going to follow the style. 
I'm going to use the Gryffindor banner as like a sort of style guide, um, a way that we could uh, put this together, but using the layout of the um, movie Common Room. So we've got our portrait hole, of course, from the grand staircase, and this uh, cylinder hinge, which means it can rotate on its axis. And the way we put this together is detailed in my Gryffindor portrait hole installation video. So you can go and check that out to see how to build yourself one of these hinges. We're actually going to be applying some stickers and goodness into our common room. Now, of course, Gryffindor common room banner, let's just bring that over here, has this mahusive window. The details of which on the sticker actually do match the style of window in the Gryffindor common room. But if we look and a picture of the Gryffindor common room as seen on film. That window is way too big. It is huge. And while it's a really nice sticker, and it will find use in my Hogwarts, it's not going to be in the Gryffindor common room because that has a much smaller room, uh, room window, which has this kind of deep, sloping, um, almost defensive it just cuts through the castle wall that is so thick and it needs to really slope up to the window and then it's got to be at the angle to allow maximum light in and down into the living space so it's got this sloped window sill so i've sort of nodded to that just behind the writing desk here some of our colors have got to change because these are going to be a couple of stickers featuring some of the hogwarts moments books from the sticker set and as you can see we've got some ugly back of plate here most of it's obscured by our fireplace we've just got to make a few changes now to the standby bricks from my test build into their proper bricks before we finish off our build there's our fireplace filled in and now we're gonna as i say use the gryffindor common room as a guide now these up here way too tall to fit into a standard uh, eight brick high module so we're going to convert those from the three high slopes to two high slopes and keep our shield in the front and we're just going to clip through the fireplace to attach it to the walls so we've got some through plates running through here right through to our window still on the outside which is actually a false window you can see the bricks behind there from a distance it doesn't look too bad and this is just to keep the style running across the front of the castle all the way just the same with the same style windows at the same height it also puts some bricks just in front of this plate so it's unlikely to ping off if it gets caught somehow by magic apparently the only problem is because we have got a plate layer here we can't integrate the bricks that normally the inverted slope bricks that would be integrated into the wall and sloping up to reach the bottom of these uh, windows i'm going to change this design style probably to something a bit fancier moving forward so the outside has got a bit more texture and it's not quite such a just flat edifice all the way up we want to break it out with some bay windows and things like that but i've got to come up with a design that won't be interrupted by this plate layer here or that i can like with this one just hang off the bricks above it and use the tension just to help keep that plate there in place. Well, that being said, the outside is not where our focus is at the moment. It's the inside. So we're going to build up the layers of our chimney. And as usual, I'm always one part short. So for now, we've got one light grey in there. I know I've got a dark grey somewhere, but has ever disappeared. I'm going to put that great piece on the top just to hold all the pieces together and that of course is our utmost layer with the next layer sitting on top so the pressure of that module on top will stop that moving around we're going to actually go to gryffindor and take out our shield and pop that on there you see we use one gray tile just because of the 45 degree angle we start to see the color change we're just going to have that integrated there and that's going to be our fireplace Next change is going to be these books here. They are held on by a snot brick on the wall of the fireplace. We've just got a couple of colourful bricks in at the moment. 
but he needs to change to black. So there we go, two black bricks. Now with our stickers on, we've gone with potions and transfiguration. As we're robbing the build style from Ravenclaw, we might as well rob their textbooks as well. That's going to sit in there and cover the first part of that plate. That's giving us our uh, unsightly look. Uh, the table across here, nice and simple. It's just a uh, just a one by six with a lamp and an inkwell. I do need to change out this brick because that was just the standby. So it would seem out of all four of those um, house banner sets, there's only one one by two brown piece. Or I could only see one. Anyway, that's going to go back in there. Finish our desk. Just going to centre our lamp a bit. Pop our inkwell back in. And we have a study desk for our Gryffindors just in front of the window there. That wall's still looking a bit unsightly. And as you can see, we've got some snot holes there. And now it's time for us to add a couple more donor pieces from our house banner, which is starting to look a bit rough now. You can see already attached to these two one by twos are some stickers. These are part of the um, banners that were in the Transfiguration classroom. Some complete examples you can see here. So it's the dragon and two crowns. I've just had a cut up and a reposition and a play around with a variety of these stickers just so that we can simulate the tapestries and wall hangings that are up in the Gryffindor common room. So our first one is going to go in just here. I'm using the um, the peg on the back of these rather than the anti-stud. Just gives us a nice perfect level at the bottom. And we just come up just proud of the last layer of bricks but not the plate layer. We still get that separation there. We can start adding in all of these parts. Now this one, again, we're going to borrow a piece from our house banner. You can see that with those corner pieces in there, they do just sit rather nicely. You can get some nice designs. Just need to fill that in with the last piece. Oh, oh, where did that go? Hold up. Oh man, I just managed to uh, ping the last piece of this off into parts unknown. So disastrously, I'm just going to have to use a bright red one, which really doesn't show you the effect I'm looking for. But man, it's always when it's your last piece, you manage to catapult it behind the desk or something. Anyway, we will soldier on. So this version of the lion crest, yellow on red, was taken from the um, Hogwarts chest. The Gryffindor banners on there. You can see I've just cut around it to remove the outlines. And at a distance, it integrates quite nicely onto this tapestry. Can't decide what I'm going to do at the top. I might see if I can find another bit of design in the dark red. Let's add that on there. And, hmm. Looks a bit unusual, but I'm still I'm not sure about this bit now. I'll have to live with it for a while and see what I like. Maybe shuffle around the directions and the positions of some things. I wanted some blank spaces. I didn't want it all covered in designs. But I'm thinking now this feels like it's left blank by accident. And this feels like I ran out of stickers. Even though I've still got a few more sets of those that I could cut up and use. Might have to change these to one by twos, maybe replace that with a, a check of yellow, red, leak yellow. As I say, I'll live with it for a bit and decide what we're going to do moving forward. But what we need to do now is finish our build. So this wall needs to be completed. The last piece of wall. Rounded ends, of course, because they're needed because of our hinge. Just make sure that's all complete. That's the back wall. Just got a couple of studs on the outside if I want to display ghosts. 
and there's our wall integrates quite nicely got to change this don't like these l-shaped tiles don't work at all just want to change those to flat and straight tiles but as ever my order is in they're on their way as you can see i rebuilt the clock tower didn't cover that you don't really need to see me building that i showed how that was made again in a past video that small little module unit now it's just a case of adding the interior details. So these are the reverse of chairs uh, that you get in the Gryffindor uh, common room set. Uh, I'm not around, I've taken them with pieces. So these are using uh, upwards facing brackets, where of course they're downward facing brackets in the set because they've got the fit to anti studs. And again, red ones are on the way, so I'm just using a couple of colours we're going to attach these onto these round uh, jumper plates just so that our chairs have got a little swivel component just so we can make things a bit more interesting. And that shows why our carpet's an odd shape. Again, I might well get some of these shapes. Ooh, that'd be interesting to move round. Would it move around that? Let's do science. Hold on. All right, so here's one of these. Now they should. I don't know if maths is right. Yes, they do. Ooh, lovely. We can now surround two by two round tiles with a full layer of tiles. Oh, I like that. Mmm, orders are going to be placed. Just got to wait for these to come in many, many, many more colours. And this is going to be a really useful element, I feel. But anyway, there's our chairs, along with our rug. Got a couple of studs on the rug at the back, as it was just transplanted out of the old common room. If you can put more students, only warming herself in front of the fire. The study desk is going to need a chair. So for that, I'm just going to use a regular chair. And we're going to attach that, not directly to the... Um, base but with a jumper you use a dark red one to keep in keeping with the color there we go let's pop some more students in to populate our space one two three yeah. look at that oh, no, a bit crowded there you go Neville and with the addition of a pillar on the outside and our lintel, yes I know, wrong colour, guess what's on order. We have our completed Gryffindor common room. So we've got half a dozen figures in there, it doesn't look too crowded. Still quite a nice space. Well that opens out nicely, there we go. And we've still got some space at the front here. We could add even more students if we needed to. There's sufficient room to set a scene here. We've got the image of Hogwarts. We've got our portrait hole. We've got our fireplace where we can see Sirius. We can move the chairs around and indeed the students to get that view. We've got our dormitory stairs at the end there. The unfortunate lentic lenticular flick. The wall hangings and tapestries. Just, oh couple more details so first of all we need to pop this sticker onto our chimney breast that's going to give us our lovely Gryffindor crest carved into the chimney breast and finally on this set up in the corner we're going to put a Gryffindor portrait that came in the set just to cover some of those ugly bricks that form our hinge. Just fill in that last bit of empty space up in the corner. There we go, and with our lintel back in place, this is the new design alongside the integrated clock tower for my Gryffindor common room. If you've enjoyed this video, 
and haven't been put off by the heresy of cutting up lenticular backgrounds, then please leave us a like. Uh, please consider sharing this so other people can see my crimes against Lego. And if you want to see more Lego Hogwarts mocks, then please subscribe to Brickin' It. Bye bye. Oh, I've done a bad thing, but I really rather like it. Hopla.